on a day like today. Oklahoma and their fans have never experienced it. A couple Sugar Bowls these proud programs have played against each other. Just the third game in the series of two blue bloods of the sport, and it comes here at one of the venerable cathedrals of Southern College football, Jordan Hare. As Oklahoma won the toss and they elected to defer, Zach Schmidt is kicking off today. We do have a little bit of a wind, as is noted. You will see on that big grand American flag high above the stadium, it is driving from right to left as the ball just came off the tee. Again, watching the quarterbacks throw in the direction that they're heading right now, there's a lot of wind in their face, so something to watch as the game evolves. Well, last week, Jordan Peyton Thorne had to come off the bench to replace Hank Brown in the second half. Yeah, three weeks ago had the four turnovers at Cal, but last week really gave him a spark in four drives, led him on two scoring drives. They need his experience because this Oklahoma defense is going to throw the kitchen sink at this Auburn attack from fronts to back in blitzes. He's got to be on his numbers today to make sure the decision making is where Hugh Freeze needs it. A dangerous Jarquez Hunter is the featured back. He's one of the dynamic game changers in the entire SEC. They're going to quickly get it in the bubble to Simmons, and Simmons is wrestled down at the 24-yard line. Our impact players are built by the Home Depot. Yet on both sides, there's a lot of talent when it comes to Auburn. You just mentioned his name, Jarquez Hunter. He's one of the best running backs in the entire SEC. Got to see a lot more of him today in their number one wide receiver, Keandre Lambert-Smith, going up against two of the best on the Oklahoma side, linebacker Danny Stutzman and Robert Spears Jennings on the back end. Billy Bowman made the tackle for the Sooners. No gain on the play. Second down and 10. Here's Hunter, and he is tackled for a loss by the great Danny Stutzman. Boy, just mentioned Danny Stutzman. You might want to block him on the first play. He's going to skirt right here, and the right guard just misses him. Right guard thinks he's on the guy to his right, should have stepped up, and that's a big negative play. Third down and 12. Thorne drives it off the hands of Cam Coleman, the true freshman who was the number one wide receiver recruit in the country a year ago. And a great read there by Peyton Thorne, just a curl flat. Young, talented receiver Cam Coleman. He's got a bright future, but has had some problems with drops, and that's the not the way you want to start the day for this Auburn offense in Hugh Freeze. So a three and out will bring out the six foot three big Aussie Oscar Chapman to punt away as Peyton Bowen's going to have a chance for a return. Driven knuckler inside the 35 and special teams coverage right away on top of it. Now here's one of the big stories. It is the true freshman from Emerson High School in Dallas, Texas, who, as we said, becomes just the seventh Sooners quarterback in history to start a game as a true freshman. Say hello to Michael Hawkins. Yeah, and you see him there, the seventh dual threat quarterback prospect last year. And that's what I want to see today. I want to see him trust his legs as a young quarterback. When you're replacing a guy like Jackson Arnold, don't try to toot too much. Listen to your feet. Make a play when it's there and trust your feet. Hawkins going to give him an easy pitch and catch to get the day started. And it's Brennan Thompson who explodes upfield for a first down. Boy, that's great to see. I spoke with offensive coordinator Seth Luttrell on the field before the game, and he mentioned, get the ball out early. Get my quarterback in rhythm. A lot of screens early as well. Quick tempo, short pitch to Barnes to the boundary. And he's taken down at about the 49-yard line. It was Jalen McLeod with the tackle for the Tigers. Second and eight, Barnes again as he crosses midfield would be third down from there for the true freshman quarterback Hawkins. At first real test here on third and medium, this Auburn defense blitzes at an extremely high rate. Tennessee brought a lot of pressure last week against the young quarterback. I expect Auburn to do the same. Third down and five for Hawkins. Here are the legs where he's so dangerous. Look at Michael Hawkins go. The true freshman houses it here on the plains. What SEC road game pressure. 48-yard touchdown run for Hawkins. 
Seth Luttrell, the offensive coordinator, drew it up. Hawkins delivered. How about that? For your first drive as a true freshman on the road in a hostile environment. What I say? Trust your legs, right? I'd say you did it. And if you got those legs, you can trust them all day long. You cannot ask for a better start as Zach Schmidt adds the extra point. Jordan, explosive speed by the dynamic young Hawkins. And here's what I love. They're going to bring pressure, and it's going to be an ET stunt here. And as those guys cross, watch the hole open up right here. Trust your legs. Just step up into it, then take off. Great decision by Michael Hawkins to not force a throw to the flat and to take off the true freshman on the biggest stage of his life out to a hot start. Jordan, Brent Venables said to us the other day, Mike Hawkins is confident he's loose in the right way. Was he ever loose on that touchdown run? I mean, we knew he was quick. The breakaway speed that he displayed to just separate from that Auburn secondary, that was special. Katie George, what say you? Well, guys, Mike Hawkins found out he was starting this week when he got to practice on Monday. Brent Venables did not make a big team announcement or have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with Hawkins. He walked on the field. They said, you're starting, and it was business as usual. Hawkins said this is a big moment for him and his family, given his dad played for OU in the early 2000s. He said the key today was to stay poised and let the game come to him. I'd say so far, so good. No doubt. You saw dad there. He played for Bob Stoops, went on to play some arena league a couple years with the Packers. And he's got to be proud of his son the way he starts this game. All right, Auburn, remember the first drive, three plays, negative two yards. Peyton Thorne coming back for the ball that was nearly intercepted, and that has been the big problem all season long for Auburn. Tip balls, deflections, and then turnovers. Des Malone nearly got one. KLS was the intended target. Yeah, just a full field progression work from his left to his right. That's his fourth read. Sometimes you just want to dump it down to the running back, right? Too much time against zone coverage for those eyes to be on the quarterback and break on the ball there. So a rocky start so far for Peyton Thorne. Dufries making a decision to go for Thor go with Thorne over Hank Brown, who was last week's starter against Arkansas, but threw three interceptions in the first half. Thorne. That was nearly picked pinpoint. That was Ethan Downs who had his hands right in the face of Peyton Thorne. Boy, just another good job of reading eyes. I'm going to try to set up the screen to the tight end right here. Slip the screen and great job by Ethan Downs just reading the ball separation. As soon as that quarterback separates his right and his left hand, put your hands up. And a third and long on this second drive for Auburn. Three straight incompletions for Thorne. Third down and ten. Quickly into space to Hunter. Jarquez Hunter trying to weave his way. And look at that extra surge to move the chains. You just got to feed this guy. Right? When we talked to Derek Nix, the offensive coordinator and running back coach, about Jarquez Hunter. Just 12 carries last week. He's like, we, we got to double that. So not just doubling his carries, but also getting him involved in the screen game. 7.1 yards per rush there, fifth in the SEC. Good things happen when you give him the ball in space. 15-yard reception for Jarquez Hunter. In the every game starter since his true freshman season. And now he'll get some work here, but he is met and then driven back as it was Billy Bowman the first to get to Jarquez Hunter, and the rest of the Sooners' defense cleaned it up. Billy Bowman is special. His ability to go from the back end at free safety or strong safety, wherever he's at, and get to the line of scrimmage in the nick of time, right? He met the running back there at the line of scrimmage from 10, 12 yards deep. He's a guy that when you flip on the tape, he jumps off. I used to watch Earl Thomas back in the day. He looked like he was moving in fast forward. Yes. Everybody else was moving in slow motion. That's how I feel when I watch Billy Bowman. Got a quick glimpse of independence there. The bald eagle who got the nod today to bring about that war eagle battle cry. Second down and nine. Quickly getting it out to Lewis and Robert Lewis, the senior from Georgia who transferred from Georgia State, 
takes it ahead for a first down. I like this. Get the ball on the perimeter, right? Oklahoma is so good between the tackles. They give you so many different looks. They muddy it up. So make this a two-on-two -two game. Make it a quick, fast break like in basketball. Get the ball on the perimeter. See if you can break a tackle and create an explosive play. Fakes the flea flicker, and then Hunter goes ahead. Faking the flea flicker, and then finding that hole and going straight ahead for another Auburn first down. And watch the effect it has on Billy Bowman. You're going to see him right in the hole that opens up as Hunter fakes this. He backs up two steps, and that gives Jarquez Hunter two more yards of separation and then get downhill. Nice little wrinkle there from Hugh Freeze. Hugh Freeze, of course, for years and years, one of the most creative offensive minds in the game. First down, Thorne drives the ball to the outside and coming up with the catch that time was Keandre Lambert Smith. He falls down and stayed focused on the ball, Jordan. Yeah, that's actually a really great throw by Peyton Thorne as, as well. The anticipation threw that one really early. And Lambert Smith, like you said, a great job on his heels of coming down with that one. 20 yard reception for KLS. Peyton Thorne settling into this game all of a sudden after that shaky opening possession for Auburn. Alston with the carry. And Alston running hard. And look at the way he's holding on to the ball because it is Demar Damari Alston who has been one of the guys who's been most affected with the turnovers. Yeah, he's had a fumble in the red zone in a critical moment. But this team as a whole, the turnovers are really the story. They could be 4-0. You mentioned it early in the open. That if they weren't leading the country in turnovers, there's a good chance they're undefeated here with Oklahoma rolling in. And this is a completely different conversation around Hugh Freeze. Second and seven, Thorne. Thorne's gonna run it himself inside the 10 and spins for that line to gain. And this is what I want to see more from Peyton Thorne. When you go through his interceptions on tape, it's not really that he's making a terrible read or throwing it right to a defender. He's trying too hard to make a play. So when it's covered like that, trust your legs. He's a good athlete, especially in the red zone. You'd rather have a positive play, not move backwards or make a mistake. Sam Jackson is in the game at quarterback. He's played quarterback at Cal. He's played quarterback at TCU. And here at Auburn, he has come in in these shorter goal line situations. Now, the ball is at the six, but they like the package with Jackson in this spot. They go with the power run game from the quarterback, but he cannot break free. He was trying to shake least loose, but he couldn't get past Thomas. R. Mason Thomas with the tackle. Yeah, interesting to bring him in there at the six, like you exactly. said. I was, at, I was at practice. They were bringing him in around the two or three yard line at times. It felt like the offense was in a little bit of a rhythm with Thorne. You take him out there, and now a very big second down, second and goal. This will be the 11th play of the drive after Oklahoma immediately with their true freshman quarterback hit on a 48-yard Hawkins touchdown run. This is Auburn's response, second and goal. Thorne, as he makes it to about the three-yard line, it'll be third and goal from there. Our Mason Thomas involved again, as Billy Bowman was. Boy, this is where I want to see Hugh Freeze give Peyton Thorne a two-way go. I'd like to see him get out the pocket a little bit. Get some rub routes, some crossers on the outside to the field. You got a lot of space to work with being on the left hash. And give Peyton Thorne and his athleticism the chance to tuck it and make a play if it's not there. Third and goal. Top receiver, KLS, is at the bottom of your screen. Hunter. He gets down to the one yard line. Got to go for it here. I think that you hand the ball out to Jarquez Hunter because you know you got two chances to get a touchdown. Now they're going to bring in some extra beef here. Sam Jackson, the receiver. 
was a quarterback back in the game. Sam Jackson. Caleb Burton is actually lining up at quarterback. Caleb Burton, and we're going to get Oklahoma's a timeout first used by Oklahoma. So that was sneaky as they go with the shift. And all of a sudden, we saw Burton in the backfield. And it will be fourth and goal when we come back to Auburn, Alabama. 17 Sugar Bowl the last time. Baker Mayfield went for nearly 300 yards. D.D. Westbrook came up big in that Sooners win. We got a fourth and goal. Sam Jackson is in at quarterback. He has seven touchdowns in his college football career that now spans three different schools. Jackson running right. Turns it upfield. He didn't get there. That tremendous Sooners front with Billy Bowman and the rest of them, Danny Stutzman, everybody getting involved down the line, Jordan. Well, that's why I said it right in the break. I might as well just hand it off to Jarquez Hunter here, being one foot away because Oklahoma is so good going sideline to sideline. Billy Bowman is going to get all the way around this and come back into tack. Jackson right there the goal line once again Billy Bowman not just playing at the line of scrimmage but be playing on Auburn side of the line of scrimmage to bring the ball carrier down there on fourth down that's why he's one of the best in the entire country Bowman comes up with the fourth down goal line stop a turnover on downs and 13 plays going over seven minutes no points for Auburn and now the true freshman on the road, five yards into his own end zone, is Michael Hawkins. And listen to Jordan Hare. Barnes, couple yards of breathing room. Boy, how about that for your second drive as a true freshman being backed up Standing in your own end zone, making checks at the line of scrimmage. That's where the helmet communication goes so far for a young quarterback. Seth Luttrell can get in his ear and say, hey, slide the protection here. You're safe on this side. Hand it off. You can walk him through a tough spot that he's in right here. Our coach to player communication now. The green dot you see on the back of the helmet, that's new to college football this year. Barnes again, patiently waiting, picks up just a couple because Falk met him with the tackle. So now here comes Seth Luttrell. You see the play caller there with a big third down to get out of trouble. And now we're going to see just how much Seth Luttrell trusts his young quarterback and just who they think they have on the outside that can make some plays. That receiver room is decimated. They're down their top five receivers. So a lot of new faces here on third medium. Nick Anderson, Anthony. And Deion Burks all out of action now this week. Third down and five. Hawkins from his own end zone. He can't get anywhere. Taken down by Austin Keys. This is a great job from the pass rush on both sides, not being selfish, but rushing and closing in, rushing and closing in. You don't want to run by an athletic quarterback like Michael Hawkins Jr. He'll hurt you just like he did last drive, but constrict the pocket and take away those rush lanes. Great job by this Auburn front. And now Luke Elzinga, just a yard from that back line of the end zone. As they will not come after him, they set up for the return for Keontae Scott. It's outside the numbers and driven back. That is exactly what you want to do as a punter from your own end zone. Well done by Luke Elzinga. So Auburn came up empty after a 13-play drive. What can they offer up when we return to the SEC on ABC? Alabama's kind of used to having Georgia's number. Let's see if Kalen DeBoer can fit right in to the shoes that Nick Saban vacated. Here's Peyton Thorne, gets the nod for Auburn tonight as he slithers his way ahead. 
You know, all week long, everybody was looking at the weather map, right? Hurricane is coming, the deep south with all the football. And then you get the 7-10 split among these games and back there at Athens. There's a hurricane just you see right the, down yeah. the pipe. That star just to the left is where we are here on the plains. The further star is Tuscaloosa, and you see Athens there. But went right in between. Nice little these. draw. It was. Just yeah. straight through the uprights. I mean, in the last two days of weather here at Auburn, it's been just Beautiful. glorious. We had a sun-kissed morning on SEC Nation as the sun was rising for the pregame show there. And the flag comes in. All-star offense number 13. Five-yard penalty remains second down. Rivaldo Fairweather is the senior. And this was a big issue at practice on Thursday when I was there. Auburn really wanting to go to that double cadence where they clap, look at the defense, maybe adjust the play. There was probably 10 false starts in their jog through period. So really struggling with that as a whole. They got to get that corrected. Of course, our thoughts with so many who were affected by the hurricane, the torrential downpours and nearly 15 inches of rain in Georgia. But we're so blessed that here in Alabama and to those to the east, they were saved. Here's Thorne on second down. It was thrown to the outside. He was looking for Camden Brown. Well, a little miscommunication on the outside. I think Peyton Thorne signaled to Camden Brown man-to-man -man coverage. And he's saying, turn and look at me, right? Settle down a little bit. Had off coverage, free access there. Thinking Brown would just settle instead of run towards the, the field there, towards the space on the slant route. Peyton Thorne facing a third and 12. He was benched after the loss to Cal. Four interceptions in that game. Oh, they tried to go inside, but instead it was Woolard getting his hand to deflect it. Boy, another really good job. Speaking of Zach Alley, he mentioned when you're rushing a quarterback, don't rush the quarterback. Rush with your man, especially on those screen plays. If he's going to start to vacate, don't just run to a quarterback and let him go right by you. Move with him. Did it there. And the second time, a little screen was snuffed out and knocked down. And the second time, a three and out for Auburn. Oscar Chapman on to punt. Flag is down. And as the ball is driven into the end zone, we will check on the flag. Jason Autry heads up this crew. Brent Venables looking for an explanation. Going with a true freshman quarterback today. Is Illegal coach. formation, kicking team number 23 was not on the line of scrimmage. The five yard penalty will be added to the end of the play after the touchback. First down. Well, speaking of the true freshman quarterback, our player check in presented by Allstate. You want to see how fast Michael Hawkins is? First drive, third down. We knew he was quick, but look at the breakaway speed. I mean, there's Aubin defenders in the second. Look at this. Watch, we're going to put it right on the 40-yard line. Bam, go. So here's his 40 yards to the end zone. Full pad, slowing down a little bit. 4-4-8. Are you kidding me? I mean, there was Auburn secondary defenders that had great angles on Hawkins, and he just ran away from all of them. A true freshman. A 48-yard touchdown run, and that has the Sooners up. 7-zip as Barnes will take the carry. He's met at the line of scrimmage. We kind of mentioned not the perfect scenario for a true freshman. He's had a hot start so far, but you're on the road. You're down your top five wide receivers. Offensive line is starting its fifth rotation as well. Look at all the names. Seth Luttrell on the field earlier was saying, I'd love to have just one of those guys. Now, Katie will inform us a little more there. All the shuffling they've had to do in the domino effect because of it. Second and nine. Here he goes again. And this time, Hawkins has to come up short as the defensive back was coming in, as well as Asante. Katie. Well, Tess, they're so decimated at receiver. They moved cornerback Jacoby Johnson to wide out this week in practice, given the severity of the situation. The position change also led to a jersey number switch as well. Johnson's wearing number 19, the same number formerly worn by tight end Caden McIntyre. And Katie, this is a spot where you need your best receivers. Third down and seven. But that injury report doesn't help. But they get it complete as he drives it to Bowers. 
Sharp and Sharp with a big chunk play inside the 25. Michael Hawkins absolutely rifled that, but let's check the flag back at the 35. Forty-seven yard reception for now. Pass interference. Offense number eighty-seven. The throw is fifteen yards from the previous spot. Correction: half the distance from the previous spot. Repeat third down. That's the other tight end, Jake Roberts, who was flagged. Yeah, you're going to see Jake Roberts trying to do a little bit of rub route. Gets too much. You're going to see right here. He's trying to set a little pick for the slant route. And you got to at least look like you're trying to avoid the defender. That time there really got a piece of him, which opened up that angle. Or excuse me, opened up the field in the middle there for Bauer Sharp. And now it's third down and 21. And that means 88,043 faithful are ready to roar for their defense. And quickly get it back to Sharp, but this time he's going nowhere. Well, just a massive penalty on that third down. And, and you're going to look back at that on film and watch it and go, you probably didn't even have to make contact there. You had leverage. The slant would have been there anyway, so just an unfortunate pass interference on Roberts. As we come to the end of a first quarter, Highlighted by the true freshman Michael Hawkins 48 yard touchdown run Oklahoma's first visit to Auburn and they're up a touchdown the SEC on ABC presented by Burger King returns after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Glad you're with us watching the SEC on ABC. Alongside Jordan Rogers, I'm Joe Tessitore up here in the booth. Katie George down on the field. Luke Zinga to punt away for Oklahoma. A couple of return men back deep for Auburn as it's driven out of bounds, and that is where Auburn will take over and that means we get to see Peyton Thorne who has a great backstory in terms of family legacy. Grandfather was a D3 coach. His dad an offensive coordinator. He started his career at Michigan State and was very successful there. Was a team captain. Came down here to Auburn, won the starting job six and six, but then choppy waters this year, Jordan. Yeah, didn't have a ton of talent around him last year. This year there's a lot of young talent around him. Just a little inconsistent. I think he's trying to make too many plays at times when he can just let his playmakers and especially his running back work for him. Had a good long drive earlier today, but the difference in this game was the turnover on downs at the one yard line. Play action. Thorne gets it complete in stride to Coleman. Cam Coleman, he's going to be a superstar in years to come. Well, I love this. Normally the X receiver out wide by himself. This time, tuck him in the slot. Get a matchup here on a nickelback. He's a big body. Man coverage, little crossing routes, a great design by Hugh Freeze for the young five star, formerly the number one excuse me, number one receiver in the country last year. He's been dealing with a shoulder injury this year, but you can see the talent. 34 yard reception. Speed option. Keeps it himself as Thorne goes ahead. I just keep waiting for him on first down just to turn and give it to Jark West on us. You know what I mean? Couple pass plays on first down. Obviously that last one to Cam Coleman. Great play call. Little play action. But man, get 27 going downhill. Good yeah, things guy happen. Who was second team all SEC a year ago. Perhaps an opportunity here on second and six. And there is the short pitch to Hunter as he tries to turn the corner. It'll be third down from there at about the 32 yard line. Woody Washington and Des Malone on the tackle. Yeah, just really tough against this defense to go laterally. All right, they're so fast. The team speed. Woody Washington making a great play there after getting beat by Cam Coleman a couple plays ago. If you're running the football against this Oklahoma defense, it's got to be vertical. You got to get north and south as quick as possible. They're too fast. Too many guys that are just erasers on that side of the ball. Third down and three. 
for Peyton Thorne and the Tigers offense. Thorne with time. Gonna take a shot downfield. And that ball's in the hands of KLS. Touchdown, Auburn. Boy, their best receiver, Keandre Lambert Smith, working on Des Malone. Heck of a throw. Actually, a little pump fake by Peyton Thorne was able to recover and deliver a strike. And that's really been probably the weakest part of Peyton Thorne's game. Throw the interceptions out the window for a second. They haven't been able to push the ball downfield with a ton of effectiveness. A big one there when they needed it. After that long drive where they came up empty. Towns Magoo gets the extra point. It was more quick strike this time. Four plays, 72 yards, and the 31-yard beauty ball to Keandre Lambert-Smith. And we got a tie game here at Auburn. On the touchdown pass moments ago, what a difference the transfer from Penn State has made. KLS. Last week against Arkansas, had 156 yards and two touchdowns, and here the big strike. Yeah, not just the go-to receiver, but he's brought a lot of leadership to yes, that young, has. talented wide receiver room, which anytime your quarterback is struggling as well, you need a voice in that room to kind of steady the ship. And he's done a great job of that. By the way, he's Cam Chancellor's nephew, the former Seahawks legend. He was pretty good. Katie. Yeah, Tess, Kurt Venables has spent some time with both OU quarterbacks today on the sidelines. There's no doubt Jackson Arnold is frustrated, but I'm told he's handled this week with class. As much as he wants to be out there helping his team, he understands the situation. Brent Venables said two things can be true. Against Tennessee, he was squeezing the ball, forcing things, and he also wasn't getting a ton of help from his teammates. But he's also been told it's a long season. How you handle this situation will be a defining moment in your career. So far, I've heard he's done a really nice job this week helping Mike Hawkins get prepared for this game. And Jordan, I turned to you on the Jackson Arnold thing earlier this week. I said, what's the deal? You said, listen, indecisive. He was seeing ghosts against Tennessee. Yeah. And he, like Katie said, wasn't helping him out around him, but they just needed a change. And so far, it's been good with Michael Hawkins Jr. And here is the guy who is that change as he quickly gets it out. And Hawkins to Thompson. And Thompson again with yards after the catch. First down Sooners. And Jackson, watching him on the sideline, he's engaged in every conversation when Brent Venables and the quarterbacks are over there watching the iPad and going over the last drive. He's leaning in all over it, helmet on, listening to the play calls right now. Still a really talented kid with a lot of good football ahead of him. Thompson went for 15 yards. Hawkins is 3 for 3, 31 yards passing. Of course, the dynamic 48-yard touchdown run. Going to set up the screen. He does so to Sharp. And the big athletic tight end breaking tackles and going ahead for eight and a half yards. Boy, and the screen game has kind of been the rushing attack for Oklahoma. They're, they're really struggling just turning and handing the football off. That offensive line has been banged up. So Seth Luttrell mentioned down on the field to me before the game, we got to get the screen game going. We got to take some heat off this offensive line, get these big Auburn defensive linemen to move sideline to sideline. And good one right there. Seth Luttrell, former head coach at North Texas, but now one of the prize gets as an offensive play caller here at Oklahoma. Second and two. Barnes straight ahead, crossing midfield, first down Sooners. We are noticing a lot more just Handoff screens, not many RPOs, something Brent Venables said he wanted to see less of from this offense. Hawkins on first down, somehow stays alive for the moment, and then desperately throwing it. You can hear the reaction from the crowd. Flag is down, by the way, deep at the 35-yard line. And now they will place that flag down where Hawkins threw the ball away in desperation. I think there's going to be a pass interference call where Michael Hawkins Jr. wanted to throw it. 
There are fouls by each team on the play. Holding defense number 23. Intentional grounding offense number nine. Those fouls offset. Repeat first down. You saw the reaction by Hugh Freeze. Like we got after him. We chased him down. We got the intentional grounding. But then Jake Crawford, the true freshman. Yeah, Hawkins looking to his left, trying to get Reagan's getting pulled down by another true freshman, Jake Crawford. And that causes Mike Hawkins Jr. See him looking to the left, one to hit that. It's not there. Starts to panic a little bit. And then as he's going down, that's just that's just something that takes more than a couple drives in your career to realize. Just eat it there. Lose five yards instead of head backwards even further. Hawkins. Plenty of time and then has to make a decision to scoot ahead and only goes for a couple yards before Eugene Asante is able to wrap him up. He is the heart and soul of this defense. Yeah, and he was a spy on that one for Michael Hawkins Jr. We talked to DJ Durkin, right, on third downs and passing situations. Who do you spy him with? Is it a secondary guy? Is it a guy like Eugene Asante? Right there, just getting eyes on the quarterback, making sure you don't give him those running lanes. One of the most venerable, well-traveled defensive coordinators in the SEC, DJ Turkin. Second down and nine. They go with the inside tunnel screen. Petaway. Petaway actually bounces it to the outside where he's run down after a gain of just a few. So obviously blocked for the inside tunnel. He had to bounce it to the outside. Yeah, just really good pursuit from this Auburn secondary on the inside. Maybe would have got a couple yards if it would have stuck it right up in there trying to make a play. And with no Deion Burks, Petaway is really that go-to dynamic receiver. They want to get opportunities with him and the ball in space. Especially here on third down, you're going to see him at the top of your screen. Right there. Third down and seven. The slant is incomplete. He was looking for Jake Roberts, and the defense gets the stop. Caleb Harris there defensively. That's just a really good job by Harris trying to squeeze in a slant route to Roberts. Ball is accurate. It's on time. The defense is just better getting the right hand in there and breaking it up. Great timing there. So many times you see that DB go a little early or get an arm or snag something that time right on the money for the pass breakup. Elzinga looking for the pin. And it checks up and then goes the opposite direction. So it'll be around the 19-yard line where Auburn will take over. A beautiful afternoon here in Auburn, Alabama. Sanford Hall, one of the iconic symbols of this grand university, will be back with more after this short break. SEC on ABC, presented by Burger King, is brought to you by Allstate and the Allstate AFCA Good Works team. Recognizing the athletes for their good work off the field. Visit ESPN.com forward slash Allstate to learn more. That's the bald eagle named Independence, the very symbol and spirit of Auburn. And a great tradition that is kept alive each and every home game. War Eagle battle cry heard before kickoff every time you're here. You only got two eagles. I got Aurea and Independence. And they don't decide who flies until they take a look at the wind patterns. So Independence got the call today. Kind of how you handle quarterbacks sometimes. Pretty too. much. Here's Alston on the carry as he goes ahead for three yards. Who's got the hot hand, you know? Yeah. It's kind of how Hugh Which Freeze. Which way the wind is blowing? Yeah, it's kind of how Hugh Freeze has really handled this situation. Last couple weeks, especially after benching Thorne and then went to Hank Brown. He struggled and back to Thorne. And I think he's really just looking for consistency. And I've loved Thorne so far because when a quarterback has thrown interceptions, what you don't want is him to start to be hesitant and not take the chances when they're there. He's taking shots and taking chances and he's getting this offense going. So Hank Brown over on the sidelines looking in at Peyton Thorne. He gets to start today. Second and seven. Alston. He is tackled for a loss by Kip Lewis. Jeez, but Danny Stutzman really made that play. Just came right through the A gap. Turned that run back into the inside. I'll tell you what, it, Stutzman didn't have, I think he only had like three tackles against Tennessee, but he was in on every play. I mean, the stats sometimes don't just tell you the impact that 28 has on the game. That's a great example there. A guy who, by the way, was basically off to the NFL, and then he was talking to Coach yeah. Venables, and he said, I want to experience year one in the SEC with Oklahoma. 
Third down and nine. Big chance for Stutzman and that Sooners defense. They're going to keep it on the ground, and they're going to get it on third and nine. How about that call by Hugh Freeze? Alston with a nine-yard run. Boy, third and nine, this is just a great call because you're going to get a really light box. One, two, three, four, five, and you're going to see that safety bail out. you got a tight end lead block, and the numbers were there. That's a great call by Hugh Freeze. Trace Ford, the defensive end, is slow to get up. The medical staff is out to check on him. And transferred in from Oklahoma State. Redshirt senior who's part of that rotation of that outstanding defensive front for Oklahoma. Of course, the big story here at Auburn, we talked about the quarterback situation, but the turnovers, especially after last week and the loss to Arkansas as four interceptions were thrown by the Auburn quarterbacks. This is what Hugh Freeze had to say this week. I know that there's people open and I know that we're running the football and we got to find a guy that won't throw it to the other team and we got to find running backs that hold on to it. I love the honesty. We like to complicate football a lot of times sometimes just like hey you should have thrown it here and you threw it to the other right. team and I watched film actually on Friday yesterday with Hugh Freeze in his office just going through some of those things he's like you know this is what I'm trying to get my quarterbacks to see don't make the play that is the difficult one make the play that's right in front of you and I think that's what he needs to see at a Peyton Thorne. What, what's that experience like with Coach Freeze the day before a game when you're sitting there with the Clipper just the two of you watching film. I love it. That's what I miss about playing is being in the film room just talking ball. You know he, he took a ton of ownership too. He's like look I, I got to call some better plays and we went through a couple scenarios where the call could have been better but there's a lot of decision making that needs to improve from the quarterback position. This team doesn't have an offensive problem. They're one of the best in the country in yards per play. He's got a turnover problem right now, but so far in this game, played a clean game. This is after the nine yard run by Alston. First down, they go with the tap pass to Cobb. And Cobb tries to get upfield before he is met by a pair of Sooners defenders. And you know, speaking of Hugh Freeze and all this, like a sound bite like that gets attention. People are like, oh, he's pointing to the players, he's making excuses. He says, I don't even follow social media or any of the media narratives. He goes, I need I need my children, I need Reagan or Jordan or Madison to even let me know what people are saying. The guy doesn't even know how to sign on to his computer half the time. You didn't know how let to sign social into media. his film. <laughs> yeah. I was sitting there, his office assistant had to come in to sign him in the film. Uh, so you're right, but it, there's not a blame he's not throwing quarterbacks under the bus he's just hey this is what happens in football sometimes the call's bad sometimes the decision's bad second and six Thorne quick strike to the outside turning the corner is Lambert Smith remember he had the 31 yard touchdown earlier that was a nice little decision there by Peyton Thorne on an RPO a run pass option one of the things that me and Hugh Freeze watched more than anything the numbers got to be right. Peyton hasn't been great in deciding to hand it off or throw it. That time, just man-to-man -man coverage. Corner bailed and a really good pitch and catch, an easy pitch and catch for the first down. See Danny Stutzman, Ethan Downs, and that front for Oklahoma looking to contain Auburn here before halftime. Six and a half minutes to go before we get to Kevin and Booger in a wild day already in the SEC. They'll get you up to speed on what happened with Kentucky and Ole Miss. Alston, good chunk play for Auburn past midfield. Boy, Jeremiah Wright, big 77, 6'5", 333. Watch this block. He's going to climb and get a little kick out. Right there on Billy Bowman. Come on now. That is a great job because that's not the guy he's supposed to block. He's supposed to work up field. A great job of having vision, vision, excuse me, from the big man and getting the key block. Thorn on first down, gonna take a shot again. And he nails it. Malcolm Simmons, how do you do, young man?
A 48 yard strike from Peyton Thorne to the fast Malcolm Simmons. Boy, and it's a great job getting Billy Bowman, the safety, out of position. Watch Camden Brown push it up and take it here, and that's going to take Billy Bowman out of center field or out of that half of the field, and that's what opens up the deep post behind him for Malcolm Simmons, one of the fastest, most athletic guys on Auburn, and Peyton Thorne benched last week back, proving he's the guy for the job. To go there and see Carson Beck and Jalen Milrow to see Bama and Georgia. Saturday Night Football presented by Capital One will be coming up tonight on ABC. And what a clash of the Titans this will be in T Town. Little revenge game for Carson Beck after yeah. what happened in the SEC Championship last year. Milrow got the best of him. I think we're going to see the best version of Carson Beck tonight. Sam Franklin from the three yard line. Franklin's taken down about the 23-yard line. Coverage where it counts is presented by T-Mobile 5G Home Internet. Yeah, anytime you have a quarterback that's turned the ball over a lot, what you don't want is for him to hesitate, and that has not been Peyton Thorne tonight. This afternoon, excuse me, he has stared down the barrel and delivered strike after strike downfield on the money for a guy that got benched that lost his job to come back and respond like this in that deep post to the talented freshman Malcolm Simmons to cap it off as good of a performance as you could want from your veteran quarterback. Things have changed after that opening touchdown drive by Oklahoma. Michael Hawkins, the true freshman, gets the call. He's going to keep it himself and try to get to the outside. A little there, but after that opening touchdown drive, he had the 48-yard touchdown run. That is now the 13th play. They only have 27 yards since that point, and they're 0 for 3 on third down. Yeah, the field is condensing. Oklahoma as a whole has not been able to stretch the field vertically with all the injuries at wide receiver. So look how close to the line of scrimmage all these Auburn safeties and corners are playing. They're not respecting the deep passing game, and they're selling out for the run and the perimeter screens. That was the tough part for a true freshman, checking at the line in a road game in this league. Barnes on second and eight as Barnes spins to the 30-yard line. It'll be third down from there. I do like how Seth Luttrell is starting to spread the field a little bit. Anytime you've got a young quarterback, the more you spread it, the more simple it gets, the more you can see the structure of the defense, especially here on third down. I got to think you use Michael Hawkins Jr.'s legs on third and short here. It's a great box count for a quarterback draw. Nobody here in the middle of the field. Third and three. Can he do it with his legs? Directing traffic. Cannot turn the corner at all. Coming up with the stop was Demarcus Reddick, the true freshman from Clanton, Alabama. Boy, and just great coverage on the back end by Auburn. And I mentioned that green grass in the middle of the field. Well, the linebackers dropped off and they spied Hawkins Jr. to make sure. See that? They're going to pop out here and then spy the young quarterback to make sure he can't pick up a cheap gain on third and short and just great coverage across the board. Again, that's going to be a storyline. Oklahoma down receivers trying to find somebody that can separate. Luke Alzinga punted seven times against Tennessee last week. This is fourth already today. Scott on the return from the 23. He goes straight up field on a good decision as he makes it out to the 32-yard line. Let's look at the Taco Bell Live Moss section, one of the great student sections in all of college football. And all season long student sections across the great country are competing to be the Taco Bell Live Moss student section of the year. You can download the Taco Bell app to learn more. They've been getting after it. Student section was over at SEC Nation earlier this morning, making oh, they, some they noise. Were roaring yeah, they behind were. you and Laura and Paul and Tim. That was a scene at SEC Nation. Thorne 
We'll keep it on the ground with Jarquez Hunter. Not much there. Of course, Peyton Thorne now two touchdown passes today, 171 yards. And a really important drive here for this Oklahoma defense and leader Danny Stutzman. They had a players only meeting in the locker room after the Tennessee loss bringing everybody together, realizing, hey, we're going to have to lean on this defense with the offense where it is. This is a drive. they got to stop the momentum that Auburn has right now, give their offense a chance to tie this one up before half. There is Stutzman opposite Peyton Thorne. Second down and nine. Flag is down as Thorne goes ahead, and Thorne is tackled by Kobe McKenzie. Offside. Offside, defense number 56. Five yard penalty. Repeat the down. Grayson Holton, junior defensive tackle, was flagged there. And again, that's that double clap, right? Trying to get a picture from the defense, change the play if you need to. That time got him to jump. We're really seeing this Auburn team slow the tempo down, not just here on this drive, but the last couple drives. Not the usual fast break offense we're used to seeing. Get to the line of scrimmage, run a play, really being methodical. Second and four after the penalty. Fakes the short pitch. Thorne. Looking for a block from his receiver, and in doing so, he should have the line to gain. Well trafficked by Peyton Thorne. And I love the decision. Had a crossing route that was mirroring him as he ran to the right. It was double covered. That's a throw that maybe Thorne forces mm -hmm. two weeks ago, and that's where those turnovers pop up. You're going to see tight end coming across the face there. Danny Stutzman underneath, so don't force it. Don't try to squeeze one on the back shoulder. Use your legs. Pick up a first down. That's some growth there from the veteran quarterback. Auburn in control as we have reached the two-minute timeout. First time Oklahoma's ever been here. Seahawks-Lions on ABC. How about the way Sam Darnold is kind of oh, having I a love. resurgence? There's some great locker room footage of the reaction to him as the sun comes out and Peyton Thorne takes it across midfield. Katie. Tess, remember, Hugh Freeze told us just yesterday, Auburn got crushed in time of possession against Arkansas last week. So that was a point of emphasis coming in today. So slowing down that tempo that Jordan mentioned really helps achieve that. That's a great point by Katie. And it, it helps you get in more perfect plays. We're used to seeing Auburn line up and have RPOs, and that's where you put the decision making on your quarterback. Now, get a look. Look over to Hugh Freeze and get in a better play, and your quarterback doesn't have to make those decisions. Here's Thorne on second and one, runs ahead for the first down. They're in good position to add to this lead before halftime. Three timeouts remaining. Katie mentioned time of possession. Here is the time of possession in this first half so far. Yeah, now you want to pick up the urgency just a little bit. You got the timeouts in your pocket. He was one of four for no yards to start the game. Eight of 10, 171 since, and add to it as KLS spins for a first down, and Auburn is in business with 64 seconds remaining until we get it to Kevin and Booger. And he's just playing with so much confidence. He looks like a completely different quarterback. The ball's coming a bit out of his hands clean. He's not hesitating on these decisions. That's a great job letting that ball go early, anticipating that your receiver's going to turn on that hitch route, and he did. And Maybe a chance for Towns Magoo for a field goal attempt. So Thorne, the last three plays, a nine-yard run, an eight-yard run, and that 11-yard pass reception to KLS. And now a first down. I can tell you they're not thinking field goal. They want to punch this one in, make a statement. Jarquez Hunter. Remember, they do have three timeouts. Here's where you might use one. And with the timeout, let's check in with Kevin in the studio. 
Best State Farm halftime report minutes away. Booger McFarland, Kevin Nagani here. We're going to get you ready for that prime time showdown in Tuscaloosa as Alabama hosts Georgia later on tonight on ABC. Meanwhile, a stunner in Oxford, number six Ole Miss, goes down the Kentucky highlights coming your way. What are you seeing right now on the, the game control with Auburn keep away from Oklahoma's offense? Yeah, Auburn's doing a really good job of running the football. And if you're the Oklahoma offense, what are you going to do? You make the change from Jackson Arnold to Michael Hawkins. You see the explosive run. But what else is there? They got to get more than the quarterback run in this game. Time of possession, the key. You guys discuss that. We will see you at the half. Back to you, Tess. Looking forward to it, Kev. And look, by the way, that Kentucky defense today holding Jackson Dart to just one touchdown pass. And a couple weeks ago, holding Georgia to just 13 points, even though they lost that one by one. Kentucky's the real deal on defense. Coach Brad White. Second and three after the timeout. Thorn ball comes loose. And diving ahead and jumping on it, Auburn's able to recover his thorn, was quick to get to that. Boy, that was Trace, Trace Ford. Ford. Trace Ford, such a great get off coming on the speed rush on the outside to Thorn's right. And almost a disaster for this Auburn offense. Pressured, survives it, and then is taken down for the sack. That was McKinsey getting in against Peyton Thorne. Now you're going to see just an inside pass rush this time, bringing pressure down this way. And right now, Auburn, I feel like trying to hit those chunk plays to the field. You got two timeouts. You can use the middle of the field, right? Get something going to green grass. Timeout was exhausted there. 37 seconds. We're actually getting a replay review here momentarily. I'm trying to find out if they're possibly taking a look at the play previous, Jordan. Yeah, that ball gets knocked out of Peyton Thorne's hand. Well, I guess it was the the set. Did a ball come out on that one? That was Auburn's second timeout, 30 seconds in length. Oh. It's second down. That's it. Clean and simple. Okay. Just the second timeout is used. So it's going to be second and 16. 37 seconds remain. Auburn will have one timeout as the ball's on the 25 yard line. So obviously. Plenty of range for Towns Magoo if they want the field goal. We'll see if they can get a little more here as they can manage these final 37 seconds coming off of the timeout. Got Cam Coleman one on one on the backside. If you like it. Hunter straight ahead inside the 20 yard line. That was on second and 16 with one timeout remaining as the clock continues to tick down. And now a timeout will be used here. The game started off with the decision to start the true freshman quarterback, making Oklahoma and their coaches look brilliant. Michael Hawkins. And he didn't take long to make a statement. The long touchdown run on his first third down on the Plains. But it was Peyton Thorne that had the answer. And this Auburn offense has really answered every time they've had the ball here in the second quarter. Thorne has been fantastic finding Malcolm Simmons, the true freshman, for the long touchdown. And now again, trying to put points on the board before halftime. So he had KLS for the 31 yard touchdown. He had Simmons for the 48 yard touchdown. And there is Michael Hawkins who got off to such a great start. Only five of six passing for 41 yards was sacked but the 48 yard touchdown run by Hawkins. That is the highlight of the day so far for the Sooners. He freezes offense has found themselves here as we close in for halftime. Kevin and Booger will get us all set for Bama and Georgia tell you everything you need to know that's happened so far in the SEC and beyond third down and ten I think they're going to take a shot to the end zone here bringing a tight end for a little more protection Neither quick to the outside and tackled right away is KLS and remember no timeouts are going to be quick to the line 
as Towns Magoo. And as they go with a fire drill, field goal attempt, snap, hold, kick. And it is no good. And I don't know that those final seconds were managed all that well, George. I hate the play call. A flag comes in. On what was technically fourth and five. Boy, they may get bailed out with a penalty here, but I don't like the play call. Throw it to the end zone so at least it's a touchdown or the clock stops. Instead, you get a fire drill. Illegal substitution. Defense. Oh. 12 players on the field. Wow. The five-yard penalty results in the first down. Does that ever save Auburn? They go with a fire drill field goal in mismanaging the clock, and because of that, it's a missed field goal. But the penalty on Oklahoma in all the midst of the chaos. Yeah, 12 on the field there. So Towns Magoo now gets a reset. He can line it up. He can take his time. The true freshman who's in for the injured Alex McPherson, who has missed the entire season, he would be the starting kicker. But Towns Magoo, the true freshman, in his place with zeros on the clock because of the defensive penalty. The 27 yard attempt. And it is still no good. Wow. And that is the reality sometimes of being a true freshman in this kind of a spot. 27 yard field goal missed. See the snap and hold, snap good, hold, laces away. Yeah, yeah, he, came got, he came across it. Yeah, got his plant leg too close to the football there, came way across it just like the previous one. But again, back to the play call at the end. I don't like throwing a hitch route on man coverage. No. Take a shot, jump ball. It's either a touchdown or at least the clock stops, and then you can trot your freshman out there, and he can have time to think about it. Katie's with Coach Venables. Thanks, Tess. Coach Venables, you were able to get the stop there. How would you assess the defense's play so far? Uh, not very good. <laughs> um, we've allowed them to just nickel and dime. It's not tackling underneath in our coverage uh, not reacting they're doing a good job running the ball downhill on us right now offensively what do you need to do to move the ball more consistently in the second half yeah we just got to hand, handle the rush I thought uh, Mike did some really good things in the first half you know Auburn's been able to sit on the ball and so we haven't had many opportunities to get in a really good rhythm but a little bit of the work they've had they've done some good things and and, uh, and Mike is showing again he's an explosive guy we got some guys open down the field we got to locate them and uh, again on defense man we got to we have tightened it up in a lot of ways. Thank you. Yeah, that defense that has given up 278 yards to Auburn. The State Farm Halftime Report is still to come after these messages and a word from our AB at Auburn. 14-7. to seven. Peyton Thorne, the Auburn starting quarterback today with two touchdown passes that Oklahoma will receive here in the second half. And that defense of Auburn, boy, they really got after it after that opening sooner. Yeah, they've been swarming the long run by Mike Hawkins. And other than that, they've pretty much stifled everything. A lot of eyes on the young, talented, dual-threat quarterback to make sure he doesn't escape like he did on that first drive. And then the coverage on the back end as well. Just no windows to throw the football. And again, spying the quarterback every third down to make sure his legs don't pick up a first. The opening drive, they went 68 yards and had a touchdown. At Oklahoma, you see the second quarter dominance by Auburn since that opening drive. Michael Hawkins in this offense, 15 plays and only 43 points. Barnes on the ground. He is met right in the hole that time as filling it was Caleb Wooden. You know, on one side, we got a veteran quarterback in Peyton Thorne having a little bit of a resurgence this game. On this side for Oklahoma, we got a true freshman quarterback that's realizing after that first drive, it's not all sunshine and rainbows no. in the SEC. It gets difficult, and you got to be able to make plays when they're there, but this defense has really taken away every opportunity. So we far. mentioned it, Jordan, just the seventh Oklahoma quarterback in their great history to start as a true freshman is Hawkins today. Second and eight. He's going to show off the arm, but it's too far beyond Brennan Thompson. Wow. First time we've really seen Oklahoma and Michael Hawkins Jr. stretch the field vertically, and he had him there. That's one thing you learn as a quarterback is just leave it on the field. A 50-50 jump ball is way better than it landing out of bounds and missed a big one there.
Third and eight, Hawkins scrambling, extending, now tucking, looking to run. He took a big hit. Converging there were Jared Thompson and Demarcus Riddick. Boy, and again, great coverage on the left side, trying to work a man concept. DB's had it plastered, so Michael Hawkins is going to take off with his legs. And Mike is down to the 40-yard line. I said swarming earlier. Auburn has been all over Hawkins Jr. since that first long run, and a big hit right here. Holding, holding defense number zero. The 10-yard penalty is added to the end of the run and includes an automatic first down. That's Keontae Scott, the cornerback. Well, I said plastered, right, about the coverage. Maybe a little too well. Yeah, plastered that came with a flag. And with that, it'll be a first down for Oklahoma. Yeah, Jaron Thompson, the safety for Auburn, a little shaken up after that hit as well. It's another thing you'll learn as a young quarterback. Man, you got to save your body when you can. Get down if you're able to. Quick to the outside, Hawkins incomplete, couldn't connect with Petaway. And remember, they are absent so many of their top pass catchers. Nick Anderson and Anthony and Deion Burks, they are missing so much of that wide receiver room. Second down and 10. Freshman having to check on the line. And the decibel level increases. Hawkins, pressure on him, sets up the screen, but the tight end sharp is gobbled up right away. Auburn all over it with Eugene Asante. Wow, Eugene Asante read this one from Jump Street. Just another great job on a screen. Watch him right here, just sit, sit, and then attack as that screen develops. With Bauer sharp there on the right side, slips right underneath the block of Branson Hickman, the center, and makes a huge stop. Third and 11. Hawkins retreating and has to throw it away. The initial pressure came from McLeod. Boy, as well just, as Riddick. When you watch this develop, there's just nowhere to throw the football. This Auburn team under defense coordinator DJ Durkin playing a ton more man coverage and watch these receivers trying to work, trying to find an opening, but just where are you going to go? Where are you going to go? Great coverage across the board forces the young quarterback to scramble out of the pocket once again. There's DJ Durkin. He's always got his son Luke by his side in these home games here in Auburn. What a great ones through the years coaching defense in the league. And Bolzinga on to punt again for the fifth time. Scott at the 12. He fields it in traffic and has a good return out to the 23. Katie. Yeah, Tess, I spoke with Hugh Freeze coming out at half, and I asked him, what do you like about Peyton Thorne's play yards. so far? And he said, it's going to sound simple, but he's taking There's care of the football. Of the he said he's not forcing the issue. He's playing clean, no turnovers thus far. He said what's unfortunate is the score could be 24-7 to if they're able to punch it in on the goal line and they don't miss that field goal just before half. He said we are still very much in a battle here. It's part of the red zone, right? Finishing those drives. I think it's one thing Hugh Freeze mentioned when we talked to him yesterday. We don't have a problem moving the football. We have a turnover problem and then not finishing drives in the red zone when we get the opportunity. Just before, a flag, by the way, at the yeah. end of that punt. Just before halftime, the mismanager in the final 25 ish seconds with the two missed focal yeah. opportunities and then the 13 play drive. Taking Peyton with the Thorn off the yes. field, bringing your Wildcat quarterback in and getting stopped on fourth and one. That was down at the goal line. This will be the worst Auburn starting field position today as the ball is cresting on the six yard line. This is where this Oklahoma defense has got to take things into their own hands. Your offense is struggling. You lead the country in takeaways. This is where you need one of those. Jarquez Hunter. Revving that engine, lowering the shoulder. 
And 11 and a half yards on a first down, Auburn. Another great block by Jeremiah Wright. The guard, just a simple little power. He's gonna come and kick out. And that's a big boy in Jarquez Hunter on Robert Spears Jr. Low man wins. Back to basics with Hunter as that offensive line drives the pile out to the 22 yard line. Oh, and, and that's why when you watch the tape back from a game like last week for Auburn, you're like, how do you only give Jarquez Hunter 12 carries? Right. Like, good things happen when the ball is in 27's hands. And it's just, it's falling forward for two, three, four yards at times when the blocking's not perfect. 10 carries now today, 45 yards for Hunter. And again, feel the pace. 13, 12 seconds on that play clock. Auburn really taking their time on these drives. Thorne coming back for the ball was Cam Coleman, the true freshman who one of the biggest recruits in the country, dealing with a shoulder injury, and you're starting to see what he's capable of. And you love to see him catch the ball on a curl route like that because the very first drive on third down dropped a would-be first down on his first target of the game. So as a young guy, a quarterback showing that trust in you again, coming back to you, having the opportunity to catch one and convert. That builds the confidence. These two freshman receivers they have, Coleman and then Simmons had the 48-yard touchdown. Watch out in the coming years on the outside with Auburn. Play clock down to one. Hunter straight ahead. This is the kind of drive that he wants. He talked this week about the workload he desires. He said, I want to have those high school kind of memories where it's fun, where you just make the opportunity time and again. Jeremiah Wright is just blowing holes open. I'm just messing with my telly right here. He said he's the right guard right there, number 77. I kept hitting the wrong button on that test. I was trying to show you big man is just plowing the road for Jarquez Hunter right now. He's been in the program for four years. He was actually on the defensive line for a year before they moved him back to the offensive line as a penalty flag will come in. Illegal substitution, offense, 12 players in the huddle. Five-yard penalty, second down. I don't want to say a vanilla look from this Oklahoma defense, but they haven't been forcing the issue a ton. Right, these methodical drives. At some point, you feel like you got to dial up the pressure, try to force the issue, force one of those turnovers that they're so known for. Second and eight. Tackle by Kip Lewis. Austin couldn't find much there. And maybe here on a third and passing situation, that's where you see does Oklahoma decide to bring some pressure here or sit back and play coverage? Stutzman projected high pick in next year's NFL draft. Third down and seven. Here's Thorne with time. Shot downfield to an open man, but he throws it to the outside of Cam Coleman. If that is laid out to a post, he may house it. Yeah, and that's that's maybe an adjustment error by Cam Coleman. They're trying to hit a sail route to number 14, Robert Lewis in the slot, and that route by Coleman on the outside here against man coverage, I think sometimes that converts to a go route, and I think that's what Peyton uh, Thorne is thinking, yep. not the post route. Right. You got man just take it off, and you see the frustration with the young receiver on the outside, just a miscommunication on that one. Yeah, that thing's a nine, and he's housing it. Yep. Great special teams coverage. Flag comes down. See if he got there early that time. And you see Simmons saying, what, what's wrong? I'm doing my job. 
Was that a fair catch call that that went unnoticed? I think maybe he called a fair catch and it went unnoticed by the unit. Let's see if he gets that hand up. Kick catch and there it is. Kicking team number 11. The 15 yard penalty will be enforced from the spot of the foul. It'll be first down, Oklahoma. Timeout. Take a break. Oklahoma trailing by a touchdown when we return. He's been very active on this Auburn sideline ever since the disconnect on the downfield throw. You saw him there talking to Hugh Freeze. He spoke with every position group but spent a lot of time with the wide receivers trying to work out some things. Active and he was very frustrated when he came off the field. Hugh Freeze told him you got to relax, settle down, we'll get it right the next drive. Javante Barnes. Good run by Barnes. And Oklahoma with a good start to this drive. And again, going back to that last play, I think just a miscommunication. Cam Coleman at the bottom of your screen on the left side, going to beat the DB. Peyton Thorne thinking he's just going to take the top off with a nine route, a vertical, instead goes to the post. He's going, hey, give me your eyes. I'm throwing that downfield. Barnes this time, not much there at all as Jason Jones made the tackle. Sometimes that gray area that you have to operate in as a quarterback at this level, when you're a young receiver, it just takes a little bit more to get up to speed. And on the same page. Barnes. Driving ahead for maybe two yards. It'll be third down from there. Mausi makes the tackle in the middle of that defense for Auburn. And you know that that section is about to roar for a third down. Showing pressure. They're trying to sort out protection here with a few seconds left on this play clock. The true freshman Hawkins on third and five. Can he do it with his legs? Extra drive gets it done. First down, Oklahoma. Boy, I love the play call. It looks like pressure. Auburn ends up dropping out of it, but you just run a little quarterback draw. Auburn had two guys trying to spy there after popping back out, but both guys had blockers right on him. A great call there by Seth Luttrell. And now this is that momentum. This is the confidence that you need as a young quarterback. Get on the plus side of the territory. Make a play with your legs and now see if you can't get something going through the air. That's only their second third down that they've converted today. And a timeout is going to be used by Oklahoma. We'll take a short break. Can they continue this march down the field? We find out when we return to the SEC on ABC. Well, you look at the recent great history of Oklahoma quarterbacks. We can speed date through this thing, right? Because Baker got in there, won a Heisman Trophy in 2017, and then Kyler Murray wins the Heisman in 2018. Jalen Hurts, he was right in the mix, a Heisman finalist in 2019. Familiar face and Dylan Gabriel, of course, you talk Dylan Gabriel, you got to mention that he eventually goes to Oregon. There's the duck, get rid of the duck. Why is there a chicken in the background? And now, this year it was Jackson Arnold who's the five star, but now it's Michael Hawkins who's, at least in the first moments today, the current star and maybe the future, the true freshman. Which, how will this whole thing play out? It's happening in real time in front of us. Yeah, I, I think, still think it's to be determined. Uh, Jackson Arnold was the heir apparent. I did the bowl game, the Alamo Bowl. It wasn't a perfect night for him, but he showed poise and talent. The future looked really bright and just hit a rough spot to start this season for a number of reasons. And now it's Michael Hawkins' turn to see if he can't get things going. And off the timeout, a struggle to get back to the line of scrimmage for Javante Barnes, the running back. Six and a half minutes to play here. A touchdown lead for Auburn. Joe Tessitore with Jordan Rogers as Jesse Palmer is on his other assignment for the letters A, B, and C. One of the many assignments. That's right. Happy to have you with us, Jordan. Katie down on the field. Second down and eight. Oh, nearly 
a miscommunication as the flag comes in, but it was Brennan Thomas coming in motion across just as the snap came. Yeah, these are little things. False start. False start. Offense number two. Five-yard penalty. Remains second down. Michael Hawkins Jr. having some words with his center, Branson Hickman, about timing up this motion. You can see he asked for it, right? He asked for it. That point there is for Hickman to snap the ball. It's late and almost a really bad play there. If that hits Brennan Thompson or whatnot, you're almost okay with a false start there instead of what could be worse. It could be a turnover that you yeah. can't afford. Trailing by only seven. Second and 13. Hawkins looks right, looks left, now runs, keeps his footing, and nearly made a man miss as a flag reigns in at the 25-yard line. It was Jalen McLeod, the defensive player that we mentioned. During the run, illegal block in the back, offense number 17. It's a 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat second down. It's the receiver, Petaway. Yeah, Petaway just trying to help his young quarterback out. You're going to see him coming to your screen right here on Asante. It was not much. But anytime you stick your hands out to the backside of a, a defender, they're going to see that. They're going to throw it. Second and 18 after the penalty. Hawkins with time for now. And able to connect as he gets it to Hester. And Hester keeps his footing. And look at that effort by J.J. Hester. First down, Oklahoma. And J.J. Hester is a guy they've been wanting to get going. The 6'4", fifth-year senior had some drops earlier this year, but a big one here to convert a desperately needed explosive play. Cornerback there, the true freshman, he's trying to midpoint over the top of Petaway. Leaves J.J. Hester in the flats there. Flat defender too late getting over there. But a great job by this young quarterback of keeping the play alive. That play went for 21 four yards. Minutes, 58 seconds, four, five, eight. They're reviewing the spot of this ball. As it stands, it's only the second play of 20 plus yards for Oklahoma today. And you're going to see his knee right here is going to come down. How close does it get? Does it touch? Oh, yeah. Maybe a I don't play know. to grab. Oh, come on. It you don't think that touched? I, listen, I, like I'm not CSI forensic science of turf here. I, it's a tough look. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, that looks like it touches. I mean, you're better at this thing than I yeah, am. Yeah, you know. Let's just cut to it. I was out there. It's beautiful grass, by the way. It is just gorgeous down on the field before. So the spot's going to probably be right around the 23, 24 yard line there. It'll back him up about five yards or so. But when you have so many receivers out, sometimes a play like that just builds confidence. J.J. Hester had a couple drops earlier in the season. He's a guy that everyone's been saying he's going to get going. They just don't know when. A big play like that can give some confidence to a guy they need desperately to step up for a receiver group that has been decimated by injury. Video review the ruling on the field stands. The result of plays the first down. I take it back. You are right, Tess. But let's look at the AT&T connected cam for this replay again. As they say, his knee wasn't down. Wow. I mean, okay. Well, here's the deal. I need to get you have to have the inconclusive video evidence that says his knee was no down. Doubt. So the ruling on the field is really critical here. Because had they say it was down, like either way, you're not over, you know, you got to have the video evidence that supports Kind of like that Miami-Virginia Tech game last right. night, except we oh saw him overturn that. That was something last night, wasn't it? Waiting for that call to be adjudicated. So it is a first down as Hawkins goes to the end zone, and it's out of the back of the end zone, but the flag comes in. That was Cam Lee. 
with coverage against Thompson. Lee against Thompson, and the flag comes in. Pass interference. Defense number four. Brennan Thompson, a great job by Hawkins Jr. Just giving his guy a chance. And again, you may be saying, was it catchable? The ball came in at a really low angle. You see here on the progressive pylon cam. I believe if he had his feet, could maybe jump and make that play, but it is borderline. First and goal. Big moment for the Sooners here. Barnes cannot get free. He's tackled for a loss of one. That was Walker getting to him. Matt Austin is our rules expert. What do you say about that pass interference? I think the pass interference was a good call because they were a little handsy, but the defender definitely grabbed some shirt and was pulling him back where he couldn't get any elevation to try to jump. As far as the uncatchability, you know, it's very subjective. If you think he could jump and catch the ball, then you say it's catchable. So, by the way, Auburn red zone defense opponents are only scoring 57% of the time. Meanwhile, Oklahoma in the red zone's 94% of the time. Hawkins. Hawkins is driven back. Boy, and it was Jaron Thompson, the safety, really turning Hawkins back in. We saw him get banged up earlier in the game on that big hit on Hawkins. The last time we saw him scramble to his right. And now a massive third down here for Oklahoma. And just listen to this. Listen to what playing on the road in the SEC sounds like. Third and goal. Zone, we will check on the flag, and this will likely be walked back. Billy Emotion, offense. Number 10 was moving forward at the snap. It's a five-yard penalty, repeat, third down. We're going to dance this dance again. And Jordan Hare is ready to explode as their defense is trying to shut the door on the Sooners' effort. Michael Hawkins, the true freshman. He's got nowhere to go. It was Demarcus Riddick, the true freshman linebacker, with the stop. Fourth down. A huge stand there by Auburn. After the pass interference call gave Oklahoma perfect field position with the opportunity to punch it in, they hold strong inside the five. Beck Schmidt, who had been the start of the last few years, on for the field goal attempt. And look at the coverage. Once again, just nobody, nowhere for Michael Hawkins Jr. to go with the football. Tyler Keltner was the starting kicker. He's out. So Schmidt with experience with the attempt. And with that, he gets three more for the Sooners. And we've got a 14 to 10 game. And that Auburn red zone defense, we told you, among the very best in the country, they win the first battle of the game head to head with the Sooners. That big third down stop. Closing minutes here of the third quarter. It's a beautiful Saturday afternoon of pressure-packed SEC ball. Doesn't it feel right? Let me tell you something. Nothing like Chef David Bancroft's Aussie Wagyu Tartar oh. last night at Acre here in Auburn. Here is Cobb on the return. And Cobb keeps his footing. And is taken out of bounds. And we may have a face mask at the end of this play. Looks like it was pretty clear that they got the face mask of Jeremiah Cobb. Dude, you destroyed that Aussie no, 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 tartar no, no. with Chef Two David. plates got put down, one on my side, one on yours. I had three bites. I looked over. Your plate was gone. Oh, I have no—I'm not. Listen, I'm, I'm I mean, getting after You probably after. housed 15 pieces of ribeye. 
in about two minutes flat. I'm not bashful when it comes to Acre Restaurant, my man. I wasn't even mad. I was impressed. Personal foul. That's amazing. Mask. Kicking team. 15 yard penalty. So about a first Listen, we, we mentioned Georgia and Bama. That's the headliner. Our college football rankings are brought to you by Prudential. But look at number six on that list. Woo. Kentucky, that defense under Brad White is the real deal. Had Georgia only 13 points a couple weeks ago. Shut down Ole Miss. And how about Texas? Just 14 to 6 at Mississippi State. Excuse me, Mississippi State at Texas right now. I mean, look at this. Director Jeff Evers just making America go ooh and ah right there with the binky, the Auburn binky. She's loving some football today. Oh. She's loving some Peyton Thorne. First down. Here is Thorne. Gets it quickly to Simmons. Simmons can turn it on. Remember, he had the 48 yard touchdown earlier today. Eli Bowen, the true freshman with the tackle. I think here with two minutes left in the third quarter, four point lead, we're going to start to understand just how much Hugh Freeze trusts his quarterback right now. Quarterback that threw four interceptions against Cal, three of them in the second half. Right now, Auburn can move the football. If they stay clean, don't turn it over, they got a good chance of closing this one out in the fourth quarter, but it's all on Peyton Thorne. Second six. Thorne, play action. Going to take a shot downfield. And jumping up and getting it is Cam Coleman. Just out muscling, out hustling. Cam Coleman with the big explosive downfield. And you know what I love? Early eyes. What was Peyton Thorne asking him? Give me your eyes. Look at turns. Is it going to be a back shoulder? Is it going to be over the top? Got his eyes back to his quarterback so he could adjust to the ball. A great throw and a great job by a true freshman at fixing a problem. You just made a mistake a few drives ago. You come back and make a big play doing exactly what your quarterback asks you to do. 42 yard reception for Cam Coleman. Sky is the limit for what this guy will do Ooh. in his football career and it's just getting started a month in as the right tackle Miller is down at the end of that play. I mean, Cam Coleman is the highest rated signee of Freeze's 11 years as a head coach higher than guys like Laquan, Laquan Treadwell and Dante Moncrief and A.J. Brown. There's been some good ones. Number eight. He's got every chance to be the best. And you're starting to see just the maturation of a young receiver from the first quarter, first drive, dropping the ball on a third down, the miscommunication on a vertical route a few drives ago with his quarterback, and right there making a play when his quarterback needed him to. Now listen, one of the big stories going into this game was how much Auburn's been turning the ball over. That Auburn's two and two, but folks, if they're not, listen, the turnovers have killed them. They could be undefeated. Meanwhile, Oklahoma's defense, masterful at getting the ball at takeaways. They don't have one today. Yeah, just haven't been able to get a ton of pressure on, on Peyton Thorne. I think Hughes done a really good job of protecting when he wanted to take shots, of getting the ball quickly out of Peyton Thorne's hands. Just not an opportunity to really disrupt Thorne in the backfield. Coleman puts them in position. 42-yard reception. Thorne on the slant. That ball was denied as he was trying to get it to Coleman. It was McKinsey defensively right there and this is dangerous this is real dangerous watch McKenzie right here watch the eyes of number 11 the whole way watching Peyton Thorne on this RPO get right into the passing lane and almost coming down with that one that's one that maybe just hand it off right I know the box counts not perfect but you're 11 12 yards from the goal line let's just chip away at this thing not make a catastrophic turnover decision. Stutzman staring down Thorne. Second down. Here's Simmons. Simmons straight ahead. And Simmons was just tripped up by McKinsey. Boy, and a massive block by Rivaldo Fairweather, the tight end, big number 13. Opening up the lane on the outside for Malcolm Simmons. Watch this block by 13 here on the true freshman, Eli Bowen. That's just a great, another great look at the progressive pylon cam of that block by Fairweather and Simmons getting down to the three yard line. Final seconds of the third quarter. Third down and one. 
Thorne trying to do it on his own, and I think he's going to be short. And that mark looks like he's about the length of the football short as Omasigo and McKinsey combining on the tackle. And we're going to have drama with fours up in the air. That's the end of the third quarter. It's a fourth and inches. The SEC on ABC presented by Burger King returns after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Fourth and inches, what will you decide to do? Uh, the book says go for it. Um, didn't like it. We're, we're going for it. Thank you, best of luck. Huh. Well, and watch right here. Peyton Thorne in his center. Connor Liu just practicing a quarterback sneak right there. Let's see if that's what they do. Remember, Sam Jackson was the short yardage quarterback when they went for it on fourth down inside the five and failed earlier today. Let's see if that's what they do to start the fourth quarter. Fourth and one. Do they get the push? There it is. That's what they practice, and that's what they got. So the fourth quarter opens up with Auburn. And you see Joanna and Jeff Thorne saying, yeah, that's a first and goal. And that opening drive, we saw the fourth, the second drive, we saw the fourth and one. They go to Wildcat quarterback. I love it. This time, put it on your offensive line. Put it on your quarterback. Those running backs and tight ends, a little tush push for the pickup. And I love they practice it because this is a team yeah. that's gone you, all the time. I love that they had all the offensive linemen trying to shield yep. what they were practicing, except you got that sky cam. You got that sky cam, Mr. Rogers. And you found it. Me. Thorne to the end zone. Flat comes down as Luke Deal gets the touchdown reception. Jeff and Joanna saying, Atta boy, Peyton. Defense number two. Billy Bowman was draped all over Deal there, and a great throw by Peyton Thorne. Look at all the linebackers. Danny Stutzman sucking up, and a great job putting that where only Deal could get it. With one of the best safeties in the entire country, Billy Bowman draped all over him, and the catch looks good. And a massive fourth down conversion and touchdown answer from this Auburn offense and Peyton Thorne. That was a well-managed drive, a little gutsy, too, as Magoo adds the extra point. Here's the Olympic gold medalist, Suni Lee. Auburn proud, loving that moment there. And Luke Deal came into this game on the season with one reception for two yards. You're not going to find a bigger one than a little wide pop pass for the touchdown on the best safety in college football. And one more, one to ten. And Joanna and Jeff, proud parents for Peyton. Back to you. Jordan Rogers, give me the X factor in that game, Georgia and Alabama, coming up here on ABC. I actually think it's Mike Bobo, the offensive coordinator for Georgia against Kentucky. They didn't move no motion or anything. I want to see a more creative game plan to give Carson Beck more layup throws to get that passing game going. And now the true freshman quarterback for Oklahoma, Michael Hawkins, in a tough spot, trailing by 11. He only has 61 yards passing up until this. Bauer Sharp chunk play Sooners. Boy, the respect you have to give Michael Hawkins Jr. when he gets outside the pocket. Watch this corner sit and wait for him, and that leaves Bauer Sharp to skate down the sideline. That linebacker corner was on Sharp, had to peel off to make sure the dual threat quarterback didn't take off with his legs, and it opened up the explosive play downfield. 35-yard reception for Sharp. Hawkins, short pitch to Barnes. Barnes well blocked and a first down Oklahoma. Just what they need for this possession. And now you're starting to see an uptick of the tempo here for Oklahoma. They've been similar to Auburn, trying to go fast, slow it down, look to the sideline. They're going to mark him just short, just like an inch short of that line to game. Well, and Auburn trying to sub right now, so they're going to hold Oklahoma at these defenders trot off the field. Now got one more to get off the field there. 
That was Crawford who was late to run off. All right, here we go, second and inches. Sawchuck straight ahead and a whole lot more. Gavin Sawchuck as Oklahoma has found their offense here in the fourth quarter. We're going to check out a flag back to the 29. Holding, holding. Offense number 87. Oh. Ten yard penalty. Looking second down. Well, it's going to be Jake Roberts. Just getting his left arm hooked on a defender. He's right here. He's going to work up, and then as Sacha cuts to the left, he's going to get his arm hooked right around. Austin Keys, I believe, the linebacker. That wipes off a big run. So for trouble, play caller for the Sooners. They got a strike, and they got a strike fast. Sacha, the lone back. Second and 11. Flag came in pre-snap. Prior to the snap, false start, offense number 86. Five-yard penalty, and then second down. All of a sudden, they're going in the wrong direction. That's McIntyre, the backup tight end. Yeah, the tight end that had to change numbers because of Jacoby Johnson, the cornerback, coming over to wide receiver, like Katie mentioned earlier. Just getting a little too antsy on that play. And boy, after two big positive plays, now headed in the wrong direction twice in a row. Ninth penalty on Oklahoma for 74 yards. As a young quarterback here, you're not going to get all 16 back here on second down. Just get something positive. Hawkins with a lot of time. Has to make a decision and then backs all the way up and throws it away. It was Keldrick Falk who was getting to him. Boy, I sound like a broken record, but the coverage on the back end by the secondary for DJ Durkin. He mentioned yesterday, Hugh Freeze mentioned, they got two redshirt freshmen and two true freshmen on the back end playing for Auburn because of injuries. That unit has been excellent tonight. Listen to this place on third and 16. They're going to go quick to Hester, and Hester won't find much on what was third and 16 as Riddick, who's been very active today with another tackle. And Oklahoma's going to roll the dice here. Look, they're getting a ton of man coverage. At some point, they're going to have to take a shot downfield. Get a 50-50 situation. Give your guy a chance to make plays or make a play downfield here on fourth and ten. And I'll remind everybody of one of the big stories coming into this game, and that is all the injuries that Oklahoma has suffered at receiver. They don't have the weaponry they want to have on the outside. Fourth down and ten. True freshman Michael Hawkins on fourth and ten. He is sacked. Jalen McLeod shuts the door on Michael Hawkins. Jalen McLeod beating the left tackle with a speed rush. He came off last drive with a bum shoulder back out there fighting through pain in one of the biggest pass rushes of the night to stop Oklahoma on fourth down and up two scores, give the ball back to his offense. SEC on ABC is presented by Burger King. You rule. Well, Aubie is leading the celebration right now. It is 21 to 10 Auburn in a season where they've looked at what's happened. The game against Cal, the game against Arkansas. You heard what Hugh Free said. Hey, man, we play Arkansas 10 times. We're in the like these fans are sitting there saying, how do we have these two losses? Well, you turn the ball over today. You don't turn the ball over. Yeah, great quarterback play today, protecting the football. And the downhill run game really started getting going with Jacquez Hunter as well. And now Hunter right behind. Peyton Thorne, he has 52 yards rushing on 11 carries. Maybe they will feed him here in this fourth quarter, and that is the case here. And this is exactly what Jarquez Hunter can do. Boy, just a great job. Perry Lewis, Jeremiah Wright, blowing the way for Jarquez Hunter. And 
Eli Bowen making the tackle at the end there, coming up a little lame. He got up and trotted off. Big hit, but a great run by Hunter. And this is where you want to see the physicality, the size that Auburn has up front with Jarquez Hunter just to be able to take over a fourth quarter on the ground. Oklahoma's defensive coordinator, Zach Alley, said to us the other day, he said, I think Jarquez Hunter is the best player on the field every time he's on the field. And right now he's got 74 yards on 12 rushes. Georgia and Bama is coming up next right here on ABC. Heavyweight battle in T-Town on the other side of the state coming your way. That ball was thrown behind the intended target, Robert Lewis, as Billy Bowman was trying to break on it. So this is one of those decisions. There's going to be seven guys in the box. So this is the right job by Peyton Thorne. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So pull it on the RPO, but watch the outside guy here. Maybe don't throw the inside slant. Hit Cam Coleman at the top there. The right pull, but the wrong throw in a really dangerous throw into traffic with Billy Bowman right there. Boy, you see Cam Coleman just sitting out there with all that space around him. Now somebody was off the mark there. They I mean, went with a quick strike, but KLS was streaking down the field. Yeah, another miscommunication. He got a soft corner there. Peyton Thorne's expecting that to be a hitch route. There was another time on that touchdown throw. Remember, he pumped thinking KLS was going to stop on a hitch route or a stop route, and he went vertical. So a lot of communication issues between these receivers. Not sure who was wrong on that one, but it stopped the clock for the second play in a row when a run play was called. Third down and ten. Play clock counting down. And they're going to have to burn a timeout. As Hugh Freeze was watching Peyton Thorne just look at that play clock and say, hey, we got ourselves in a little bit of trouble there. Yeah, I think he's saying you threw that ball twice. We got to hand it off. You had a big run from your running back, Jarquez Hunter. And then twice on RPOs, they might be the right decisions, but let's just hand it off. Let's keep that clock going. Get some positive yardage. Instead, two incompletions stop the clock and a miscommunication there as they tried to adjust the play with the play clock ticking down. Peyton Thorne, 16 and 25, 251 and three touchdowns today. On a day we really have seen the young wide receivers shine. And Simmons had the big touchdown. Coleman's had 82 yards to lead the day receiving. They're down in 10 after the timeout. Hunter just gets back to the line of scrimmage. And a good play on the backside there by Kip Lewis. That's one where after a couple incompletions, it, it, you maybe would have wanted to block that up or throw it there with that many guys in the box and bringing backside pressure, but just hand it off. Let this clock start to tick away here in the fourth quarter. See if you can't make a field goal. Remember, Alex McPherson, who would be the normal starting place kicker. He's missed the entire season. Didn't miss a field goal or PAT all last year. So Towns Magoo, the true freshman, with a 51-yard attempt. And that had no chance whatsoever. So it remains an 11-point margin. And it is now time for the Aflac trivia question. We've got the true freshman out there today for Oklahoma, Michael Hawkins Jr. And we ask, before what happened today with Michael Hawkins Jr. starting here on the road at Auburn, who's the only other Oklahoma true freshman quarterback to make a start on the road? Their first start on the road, it should be. Who's the only other Oklahoma quarterback as a true freshman to make their first start 
in a road game. They've had some of the all-time greats. Caleb Williams came in the Red River and started That's the right. week, but I think that was at home. He was a freshman in 2021. But let's answer it here. This is a good one, right? Because you got to go all the way back to 1984, and it's an all-time legend oh. in football. The last true freshman to make his first start on the road, a true road game for Oklahoma's Troy Aikman. And that was a loss at Kansas. It's going to air it out. And connect! Big time throw and catch. Hawkins to J.J. Hester. What did I say? Last drive, they're getting man coverage. At some point, they're just going to have to take a shot. And who is it? J.J. Hester, the 6'4". 200 pound fifth year senior working on Kane Lee really the best cornerback for Auburn right here man to man JJ does a great job of stepping on his toes there climbing on the inside then getting outside and staying vertical and what a dive by Hawkins a 60 yard toss from Hawkins here's Barnes and Oklahoma sitting back saying hold on we're knocking on the door and we got just under nine minutes to play and we're going to cut into this thing boy I just saw Michael Hawkins Jr. yelling at his offensive line I think encouraging saying let's punch this in you're seeing the true freshman parents in the stands Annabelle and Michael Sr. Michael Sr. who played for Bob Stoops was a cornerback second and goal straight ahead and here come the Sooners so Michael Hawkins the true freshman starting on the road here with a 60 yard reception to JJ Hester the completion downfield and then Barnes brings it in Go for Dose brought to you by Dose Ekes as Oklahoma is going for two to try to make this just a field goal game. Can they cut it to three? What a moment for Michael Hawkins, the true freshman. Two point conversion attempt. Hawkins looking to extend this play. Tosses it to the end zone. Diving effort from Sharp can't come up with it. It was Jalen McLeod who was pressuring Michael Hawkins. But all of a sudden, you look up at that scoreboard and what felt like the kind of game that Auburn was taking in for a nice soft landing. A 60-yard pass to Hester. And the Sooners are right back in it. Back here in Auburn, Alabama, we got a good game not far away from one of the most iconic corners in all of American sports. Toomer's Corner, get your lemonade, look at the live oak trees, and take in all the pageantry and history of a football weekend here at Auburn. 21 to 16 after Oklahoma just found something offensively. What's going on, Kevin? Yes. Yeah, we got live look in here. Carson Beck getting ready for Alabama. You know, Book George is the only team with no turnovers this season so far. No doubt about it. In the game last year against Alabama, Alabama did not blitz Carson Beck one time. Will that change tonight, Kev? Can't wait to find out. Number two, Georgia getting ready for the road game against number four, Alabama. That's coming your way prime time on ABC, Tess. I cannot wait for that Kevin and Boog. Carson Beck with seven touchdown passes on the year. Be interesting to see the kind of role that Jalen Milrow plays for Alabama. Do they commit to allow the quarterback run game? And we saw the deep ball come back against yep. Wisconsin. Ryan Williams, the young 17 oh. talent at receiver. Had a huge day. Expect him to make a few plays tonight as well. Between Ryan Williams and Bama and then Cam Coleman here at Auburn. Oh. I mean, you got two of the next great all-time receiver stars just blossoming here in this state. But this Georgia-Bama thing, it defines so much in our sport. And I love now that we have the 12-team playoff. This is going to be a heavyweight matchup tonight, but it doesn't knock either team out of their playoff aspirations. No, but it's nice to be the one seed. Oh, it, one, I'll take a bye. Yeah. Uh-huh. 
No doubt. Remember, only the conference champions can get that first round by. There will only be one SEC team sitting there one through four. Second and 11. Thorne steps up, avoids the pressure, tucks and runs and makes the most of it before he's taken down by Kip Lewis. And Peyton Thorne's got to keep making decisions like that. He's going to get himself into trouble if he decides to force one into tight coverage. Oklahoma was great on the back end there. So just cut your losses, scramble, try to make a play with your legs. He's been perfect protecting the football tonight. Only a couple throws that he would want back. He's got to continue to be clean here on third and six. They're three of ten on third down today. How about this? Hudlin wait until 12 seconds left on the play clock. Getting every second of this clock here to tick down in the fourth quarter. Third down and six. Quickly gets it out of the backfield and for a first down. As it's Jarquez Hunter. He was just sprinting out of that backfield and he gets seven yards on what was third and six. Yeah, great play design there. Trace Ford, the defensive end, has got to peel off on Hunter. A little bit of a pick play by Keandre Lambert Smith there as well. Just a great call by Hugh Freeze. And a big call. You felt like they needed some momentum there after how the last drive ended. Danny Stutzman in this Oklahoma defense. They need to stop. They need to give their offense a chance here. Trailing by five. Hunter on the ground. Hunter keeps his footing and first past midfield. Boy, he's going to run right through an arm tackle from Danny Stutzman. Not many people can say they've done that. But this is Jarquez Hunter. This is why I was saying last drive, just turn and hand it to 27. Like the first guy never brings him down. Couple positive plays to 27, and that clock now ticking under six minutes. Using every precious second that the Sooners need and desire. Snapping at one. And Thorne goes ahead. Boy, a little, little wrinkle there on the zone read. That time a B gap insert. And Auburn has just eaten up the clock. Time of possession you see there, 30 to 23. Two guys that are at the top of their professions on their respective sides of the football in a battle here in the fourth quarter. It's four minute offense for Auburn as Alston that time was tackled for a loss. It was a good effort defensively by Omasigo. Yeah, and Oklahoma keeps adding a second level defender to the box here. I think they're saying, look, we're, we're gonna we're not going to let you just hand off and, and tick the time away in this game. We're going to force you to throw the football here. Put the ball in your quarterback's hands. Des Malone and Danny Stutzman and the rest of this Sooners defense. Auburn goes trying to Mustang, find a, a Mustang package. All five wide receivers. No running back yeah. in the game. And Oklahoma stacks the line. On third and four. Can the Sooners get the much needed stop? Thorne. And it's intercepted. Accepted by Lewis. Kip Lewis. Could he? My oh my. Pick six. And just like that. We have been. Praising Peyton Thorne for protecting the football. It's been the storyline of this Auburn offense all year. Oklahoma just needed one here in the fourth quarter to go their way. They dial up a zero pressure and bait Peyton Thorne into throwing exactly where they wanted him to. And now Oklahoma is going for two to try to push the lead to three. 
Michael Hawkins back to pass. Now he's going to try to run, extend the play. Hawkins looking for anything. Can he get to the corner? Dives in! Two-point conversion. What seemed hopeless just moments ago, all of a sudden is an Oklahoma field goal lead. Boomer Sooner here on the Plains. Are we seeing a star born in front of our face in Michael Hawkins Jr.? We've seen it with his legs. It was the big pass play to J.J. Hester to cut it to a one-score lead. The pick six and then putting his body on the line to put Oklahoma up a field goal. I mean, this is outrageous. Auburn was in a four-minute offense, running clock. Turnovers have killed them all year long, and they didn't have one. Here's the two-point conversion. And Auburn has struggled with mobile quarterbacks, keeping them in check. Hawkins makes the decision right here. I'm going for broke. And we saw him come up short last week against Tennessee on a similar play, putting his body on the line this time. Punches it in. A 63-yard pick six interception return touchdown by the captain today, Kip Lewis. And I love what Oklahoma did on that pick six. They stacked the line of scrimmage, everybody up close to force Peyton Thorne into a hot throw. Little did he know that was exactly what they wanted. Here it is right here. All these guys stacked at the line of scrimmage, but watch Kip Lewis is going to bluff and then drop right back into that slant window. Baited him into a quick throw. Anytime you stack the line like that, you know the quarterback's going to try to get rid of it quickly, probably to the middle of the field because there's no safety, so you drop a linebacker right into that window. But, man, it's still not easy to make that catch and take it back for six. That was a hell of a play. We're prepping for this game. Brent Venables described Kip Lewis as a ball magnet. Yep. The magnet got it. And then he became a rocket. 63 yards later, Oklahoma now has the lead. Option. Thorne. Pitch to Hunter. Hunter. Out at about the 29-yard line, under four minutes to play. The story has been turnovers for these two teams. Oklahoma now 49 points off of turnovers. That's the most in major college football. And the storyline for Hugh Freeze and this Auburn offense continues with turnovers as well. Here's Thorne. Back to business. First down for Auburn as he gets it to Robert Lewis. Under three and a half minutes to play. And here, two timeouts for Auburn. Three minutes and 20 seconds left. You just need a field goal. Don't feel like you got to start taking shot plays. Take what's there. Get back to the ground game. Methodically get this thing downfield. Yeah. Keep it on the ground with Hunter. They have two timeouts remaining as we come up on three minutes to play. Just suddenly, it was 21 to 10 Auburn. And then the young Michael Hawkins sets a 60 yard completion downfield, cuts it to five, and then the pick six. There's the lead. And now Thorne looking for anything, and he gets corralled by Danny Stutzman. Thorne took a huge hit there, right in the hip. You can see him wincing in pain. He's been putting his body on the line today as well. Danny Stutzman, neck rolling everything, coming downhill, laying the hammer. Remember, they got a true freshman kicker in Towns Magoo who missed from 27 yards and 51 yards today. Alex McPherson, who should be the starting kicker, has been out the whole year. Out with an illness. Here's third down and four, and he's sacked. He is sacked by R. Mason Thomas. R. Mason Thomas working on Percy Two Lewis, the big now. left tackle, and he's just going to beat the 6'7", 355-pound left tackle with speed on the outside. Right here, just right around the corner. Getting on Peyton third, excuse me, Peyton Thorne on third down in Oklahoma with a huge stop. Two minute timeout. It's arrived. 
Rogers, Katie George with you back here at Auburn with Auburn all of a sudden trailing by three, facing a fourth down and 11. Game on the line. A near miraculous comeback by the Sooners with a pick six from Kip Lewis that gave them the lead moments ago. Here it is, fourth and 11. Peyton Thorne back to pass, pressured, extends the play. Chased down and absolutely blasted. Blown up by our Mason Thomas again. Back-to-back -back plays by R. Mason Thomas, first on the left tackle, this time on the right tackle. The speed never gave Peyton Thorne a chance. Watch him work off the, the edge here on the right. Thorne barely gets a chance to get his eyes downfield before he's trying to dodge the tackle. And the coverage on the back end, great because Auburn held two extra guys in, so only three receivers in route routes there, so everybody double covered. And R. Mason Thomas with two of the biggest plays of the night, back to back, to close this one out, possibly. Earlier in this fourth quarter, yeah, that sums it up. We get your pain. Earlier in this fourth quarter, Auburn led 21 to 10. The Oklahoma offense was struggling. A true freshman quarterback making his first start on the road, as this is him, Michael Hawkins here, decides to air it out and hits a 60-yard completion downfield to J.J. Hisser. This is the moment right here, Jordan. And just the third pass that traveled further than 15 yards all year for Oklahoma. That one on the money. And then it was the Oklahoma defense like they have done all year. Kick Lewis dropping right underneath that slant route by Peyton Thorne and taking it back to the house. And this game turned on a dime. Coming up on a minute to play. And then we're getting you to that heavyweight clash in Tuscaloosa as the flags come down as Chris Fowler and Kirk Herbstreet and Laura Rutledge and Holly Rowe will have coverage. The snap, 15 of the offense was not set. It's a five-yard penalty for a false start. Be second down. The clock will start on the snap. That broadcast crew will have coverage of Georgia at Alabama. I mean, are you kidding me with this day of SEC football on ABC? It's been unbelievable. How good has this been? Ole Miss gets upset by Kentucky. We got a thriller right here. Oklahoma somehow, with all the injuries, are going to move to 4-1, and one, possibly here, with an upset. Maybe an upset, but a big win on the road. Your first SEC game on the road. And then tonight... Georgia and Alabama coming up in moments from the other side of the state. Here's Barnes. Let's go to the studio to Kevin. Tess, yeah, I wonder what he's thinking about right now at Nick Saban Field. We'll find out soon. Saban and College Game Day will be live from Tuscaloosa to get us ready for all Alabama and Georgia. Meanwhile, there is Kalen DeBoer's team coming in as an underdog. Prime time matchup. Let's go back to the Plains. Thank you very much, Kevin. That is going to be something. There is Kip Lewis, who had the pick six that he returned 63 yards. Man, oh man, Peyton Thorne. I mean, all week long, all they did was concentrate on ball security, on not throwing interceptions. That's what killed Auburn in the weeks leading up to this. They only have one turnover today, and it's that one. And it cost the game. It really did. The decision-making that led to that, then the turnover. Auburn still with one timeout here, so on third down, they're going to be able to stop the clock, force Oklahoma to make a decision. Do you kick the field goal? Probably, yeah. But then that still makes it. A manageable one a possession man, game. A one possession game. But it gets it out of the field minutes. goal range. Yep. So here, here is that third and 11. As a young quarterback, you can't take a sack here. Absolutely not. Got to play it safe. Ball security and think about the field goal range as well. Remember, the communication cuts off at 15. So he waits and then under 15 on that play clock, he looks over to the sideline. They run option. Hawkins keeps it himself, and Hawkins gets it down to the 22-yard line. And the timeout, of course, will be used by Auburn. And a great final decision the there by Seth Luttrell. The box was stacked. You had man-to-man -man coverage, but you had to force Auburn to use a timeout there. 
You know, it's just hard to believe. And this is such a fickle game and a heartbreaking game because you can sit here and you can seemingly do everything you want to do right. And that was the case with the quarterback play, with what Hugh Freeze was talking about all week long. And it just takes one moment, George. We're getting ready just to sing the praises for four quarters of Peyton Thorne, right? The turnover prone offense yeah. that protected the football all game. And then concentration and decision making lapsed in the fourth quarter. And like they do and like they have all year, Oklahoma capitalized. This super talented Oklahoma defense that has gotten the ball from everybody has scored points off their takeaways. When they needed it, they got it. And now Zach Schmidt is on for the field goal attempt. To try to make it a six point lead. 39 yards for Schmidt. They're going to fake it. Or try to draw them. See if they call a timeout here. As quickly Josh Plaster, the holder, went under center and gave them that look. So now one timeout remains for Oklahoma. Auburn, of course, they've exhausted all their timeouts. And it wasn't just the interception. It was the decision-making before that. That's an RPO that he decides to pull nearly an interception. And again, just hand it off. I know it's not perfect, but you stop the clock. Another no positive game. And then a third down. Clock's ticking down. And Hugh Freeze was 21 10 at this point. Livid, yes. 21 10. Hugh Freeze was livid with the decision-making of his quarterback. And that was right after Jarquez Hunter had just ran through an arm tackle for a big gain. Sometimes, no matter how it looks late in the game, you just got to hand it off, keep the clock moving, churn yards out instead. It's a different ball game here with 58 seconds left. All right, so back to business for Zach Schmidt. 39 yard attempt to try to give them a little bit of a cushion here with under a minute to play. Well struck, good rotation and through so now the stage is set for Auburn with no timeouts remaining to salvage this day at home field goal off the board now so with no timeouts and probably a little less than 50 or around 50 seconds left you're gonna have to go nearly the length of the field how does Peyton Thorne respond after a devastating interception that turned this game they do have big, talented wide receivers, and they're going to need a couple chunk plays to get themselves in a situation to take a few shots in the end zone with little to no time left in this game. Boy, the roller coaster of emotions Isn't it amazing? Auburn fans have been through today. Finally seeing their offense have a pulse, protect the football, go up and down the field to have your hearts just ripped out here in the fourth quarter. That sunburn won't be the only thing that's hurting tonight. That's a good point, my man. That's a good point. Got a football that was thrown from the stands. An audition. And Schmidt kicks away. And Jordan, I will ask you now if you are Peyton Thorne and you are Hugh Freeze and you got to manage 54 seconds to bring it all the way down the field for a game-winning touchdown, how do you approach it? Well, you got to get a layup first. You have to get some kind of positive yards on this first play. A negative play or zero gain is the worst thing that happens. Then you can push the tempo. Then you can try to take a shot down the middle of the field. Because remember, that ball, excuse me, the clock will still pause on a first down, give you time to line up, clock it if you need to, and salvage some of the clock. But this first play is so important to get some positive gain. You got really talented receivers with KLS and then the two star freshmen. Let's see how he goes to work here. Here is Thorne. Quick strike over the middle as he is able to connect with Fairweather, the tight end. Oh, and an important spot there. They gave him the first down. So the clock will pause momentarily. Ten yards to Fairweather. Thorne. 
was Robert Spears Jennings just darting in like a rocket. Heat seeking on Peyton Thorne. This is where you still got to have awareness of where your pass rushers are. Haven't said his name a ton tonight. Robert Spears Jennings blows up Peyton Thorne. Look at the time it cost him. They get it complete as he goes to Fairweather. But precious seconds counting down. Auburn's last hopes here. An 18-yard completion. Last play is under review. They're going to take a look at that reception and that spot. What a huge yeah, benefit to, to Auburn. Weather. Get a yes. chance here to, to huddle up, talk about your next play. Do you see Fairweather working down the middle of the field twice in a row with big catches? You can see. Oh, he's going to be short of that line of game. I think that's going to be at least a half yard short or so. Let's bring in Matt Foster, our rules expert. Give us the complete scenario here, Matt. Yeah, Joe, I think it's pretty clear that he's definitely going to be short. And what that's going to do, it's going to create a running clock, which means the clock never should have stopped. So what they're going to do is they're going to put him down about a yard short of the line to gain. They're going to reset the clock to where he was, where it was when the runner went down. Then there's going to be a 10 second subtraction. And since Auburn doesn't have any timeouts left, there's nothing they can do about it. So they'll reset the clock to 19, then run it down to nine, and the clock will start on the ready for play. Wow. That is a compromised situation with the clock that Matt Austin, our rules expert, longtime SEC official, puts forth. But watch how he comes up short here. After video review, the ruling is the runner was down short of the line to gain to the 44-yard line. The clock will be reset to 19 seconds because it occurred under two minutes. There's a 10-second runoff. It'll be set to nine seconds to start on the snap, on the ready. Third down. On nine minute. seconds, that's it. Yeah, no so timeouts, nine seconds. So Auburn's going to have to decide, you want to snap it right there, or do you want to, well, it's third down, but you still could well, clock it. will be fourth it. down then. Yeah, you still could clock it, though, and take a breath and, and yes. figure out what that one play is, because you have the luxury with it being third down. The one yard doesn't matter. You need 20 right. or 30 yards right here. Here we go. Here's Thorne, back to pass. Incomplete, four ticks of desperation remain and if that would have been complete that that might have been game over so it's a good thing that was incomplete there and now Auburn and Peyton Thorne will see how far he can throw it and if you look at the defensive backfield for Oklahoma they are taking three defensive backs and lining them up across the goal line and Thorne has the arm here I watched him in practice on Thursday reach the end zone from the other side of the 50 here's your ball game America Thorne's going to crank it up. It is caught at about the 13, and that will end the game. As that young man has a breakout moment, a true freshman starting on the road at Auburn, Michael Hawkins, a defense that came up big at the right moment with a pick six by Kip Lewis, and an Auburn 21-10 to fourth quarter lead is. It is Boomer Sooner for an SEC road win. Absolutely incredible fourth quarter. Coach Venables is with Katie. Thanks, Tess. Brent, it was 21 to 10. Auburn looked like they were in control. How did your team gut this out and pull off this comeback? Yeah, just staying together, believing. Uh, what a last couple of minutes there of the game, man, where our guys just dug in and were there for each other through the good, through the bad. Um, fantastic. There's great stocks and amazing. Uh, touched a couple touchdown drives there by our offense. Better late than never. Uh, incredibly proud of our guys. And Auburn, man, they played so well for so long. And But, hey, we just kept hanging in there. At the end on that's what we told them, man, just find a way to win. Get to four and one. Somehow, some way, you got to believe. You're going to have to be ready to fight your butt off all the way to the last second to off that clock. That's what coming to Auburn uh, will do to you.
you were not thrilled with your defensive play at halftime. How pivotal was that group's performance, especially in this fourth yeah, quarter? The fourth quarter, fantastic. And again, Auburn's really good, man. When we went into this watching them from a year ago and running the ball on some really good people like Bama and Georgia. And, and, uh, and they'd be 4-0 coming into this game had they just taken care of the football. So uh, they blocked us. They, they ran through us, and they were physical. And our guys never stopped believing and kept fighting. And, uh, boy, what a, what a really great win. You don't win this game without Mike Hawkins, 60-yard completion to Hester, him putting his body on the line for the two-point conversion. Hey, it's about time, man. We've been waiting and waiting and waiting for, for uh, an explosive play. And, and then how about Zach Schmidt, you know? Uh, what a amazing young man. Uh, Tyler Keltner had appendicitis, so he joined the injury list, and Zach was just fantastic, man, fantastic all night long. And came up huge uh, when we needed most because that's a, that makes the difference on how they're managing that, you know, that, those last few seconds there. Do they need a field goal uh, or a touchdown? So, man, he's got ice in his veins. Really happy for him. What did you make of Hawkins' first career start? Yeah, just his guts and his toughness. He can... You know, Jackson can make a lot of really good plays, too, with his legs. Mike has great burst, uh, incredibly explosive. He did a nice job keeping his eyes down the field. Uh, he's got a tremendous belief in himself and his teammates. He strains every snap, and uh, the teammates followed that tonight. And, uh, and that was uh, that's how we won the game. You know, just they never put their head down. They continued to, again, uh, just buy into what we're asking them to do. And so the guts and the toughest, man, you can't put a value on that tonight. Congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate it. Test. That 60-yard completion by Mike Hawkins, just the second Oklahoma quarterback to make his first start as a true freshman in a true road game. The pick six did it, too. 27 to 21 for Katie George and Jordan Rogers. I'm Joe Tessitor. Enjoy the rest of your night, including Bama and Georgia. So let's get you to T-Town with Reese Davis right now. Take it away, Reese.